Let's brother Peter with tidbits from the word and I'm in Ephesians uh, chapter 4 and I didn't get to finish last time but it, the chances are that you won't find the last one I did or the next one you just have to sift through them and see if you can find something that will tie together. But I was talking about acting like a Christian, being a Christian and saying you are a Christian are two different things. You can say all day that you're a Christian and act like a heathen. Nobody will believe you're a Christian and that they have good reason that you're not acting like one. If you're not acting like one, you probably ain't one. And so what you need to do is check that out and see where your problem lies. And your problem probably lies in the fact that you didn't mean it when you asked the Lord to save you. Therefore, you didn't follow through with it. Because you didn't follow through with it, then you can't live it because you can't live it because you're not in the book. And if you're not in the book, you can't live what the book says to live. You got to be in the book in order to live the book. You got to know what the book says in order to live what the book says. You have to still see a stop sign before you can tell that you need to stop. And that, so, and that's it. Now, what we had talked about in the previous 10 minutes that we were talking was learning Christ, be thoughtful. Uh, hear Christ, put off the old man, put on the new man and the new attitude, uh, put away lying, speaking, angry, angry, drinking, all the fleshly thing, uh, and be angry without sinning is to give no place to the devil, none whatsoever, in verse 28 of Ephesians chapter 4. And uh, give to the poor and the needy, and this is where I got hung up, I said that I have always, and we have, we've tried, but nowadays it's difficult uh, to find somebody. Somebody will say, they're poor as dirt. And you go over there and you say, what is the problem? Well, the problem is, is that they, <laughs> excuse me, they're getting uh, $900 worth of food stamps. They have a, it's a telephone that's paid for by Uncle Sam and uh, they have a check coming in uh, from SSI and uh, they're living totally on the government and won't want to do a day's work. If, if you've got something to do in your yard, which I have all the time, I can't get a person to come over here that won't steal from me or, or think that I owe them more than they do. And they live on the government and they don't work. And if they come over here and work, they say, well, man, if I, I work that kind of work, I get $15 an hour cash. Wow. Uh, or I ain't going to work. Well, you, they've rendered themselves useless to the average person. And they're living free, free-handed. Uh, I'm a person that believes that every bite of food that you eat, that you didn't earn, you're going to pay for one day. I believe that every cigarette you smoke, that one day you're going to pay for that. I smoked 17 years. I know what it's like to smoke. And I, I've been forgiven of that. And it's in the past, cast into the sea of forgetfulness, and I'll never have to face it again. And uh, the Lord forgave me of that. But I did waste that money. And because I wasted that money, I today am not in a place I would be had I not wasted that money. And uh, so... Give no place to the devil. Be uh, quit stealing. <laughs> Verse twenty-eight. <laughs> it says, "Quit stealing. Quit stealing. Uh, what is stealing? Stealing's a falsified bill. If you have a false bill, you're stealing. If the bill is accurate, you're not stealing." I went into a store a little while ago and the man looked at a price on the thing and he told me $60. And what he was looking at it upside down and it said, it, and the, the way it was shadowed in there, it looked like six zero. But when I got it home and I got it out and I'm fooling with it, it said $99. And all he saw was the upside down nine one of them and the bottom part of another nine and it looked like 60 to him so I said to myself well uh, did I gain $39 or can I live with that 
And I said to myself, Peter, you can't live with that. You can't go and steal that money from that man because he read it wrong. It's his machine, and it said $99 on it, and it was 99 even though he read it wrong. So I went back to him, and I said, by the way, that machine that I got from you that you said was $60 that you put on the book, you need to change it to $99 because it's $99. And then I proceeded to tell him, I questioned my faith. Is my faith worth more than $39? <laughs> Is my Christian testimony worth more than $39? I'll guarantee you, somebody in that store knew that gun was $99, that spray gun. And I Eventually, it would be brought up, and they'd say, well, I sold that to Peter for $60, and he didn't come back and tell me it said 99 on it. And uh, so I would blow my testimony out the window for $39. And by the way, $39 is a lot of money to me, but it's not a lot of money to a center man. He walks in a store and lays $39 down and gets a carton of cigarettes, 10 packs, with 20 cigarettes in each pack. That's 200 cigarettes. And he paid $40 for it. You do the math yourself, how much that is each. And he'll go out there and light that cigarette, smoke half or two thirds of it, throw it down on the ground, and in a few seconds, proceed to light another one. To me, that's like taking $39 out here and take a match <laughs> and light it on fire and burn it. And uh, 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 I know people that can't pay their rent. They can't make their house payment. Yet, the two in the family smoke. But they can't make the house payment. The reason they can't make the house payment is their cigarette bill is $350 a month. Their house payment is $340 a month. So therefore, they're smoking ten more dollars up than their house payment, and can't can't bank their house payment. Well, that's beside the point. All that is saying this. All that is saying this. <coughs> if you are a servant of the devil, he is not going to treat you good. He is the ultimate end of serving the devil. Is total disaster. You are going to come up to the end of the road to where you're going to think suicide's the only way out. I, I am in such a mess. I can tell you what you do. When you get there, look up and say, Jesus, I have made a mess of my life totally. I need some help. Forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and save my soul. He's waiting. He's drawing you. He's wooing you. He's trying to show you that you're on a road to destruction. And everything that you do within yourself is against Him. And so this morning, learn Christ. We're talking about walking for a living, working for a living, giving to the poor, using the tongue right, grieving not the Holy Spirit. Putting away bitterness, wrath, anger, calamity, speaking, malice. Put all that away. Be followers of God. Chapter 5 and verse 11 of Ephesians. Uh, walking in love. And that's chapter 5 and verse 2. Walk in love. Uh, let not fornication, homosexuality, covetousness, filthiness, foolish talking, a sex lust or jesting uh, be once named among you after becoming a saint of God. Let me tell you what. You become a saint of God and you start following the Lord and you start reading the Bible and you start witnessing a little bit and then you go out there and you look a woman up and down like she's a sex object and the people that have been listening to you thinking about getting saved just say, there's nothing to that man. He's got more bad in his brain than he has good. I see how he looks at these women. I see how he 
wanks.